In the labyrinth of international relationships, interviews often serve as windows to understanding, offering glimpses into the minds that steer nations. When Leslie Stahl of CBS News sat across from Iran's President Ebrahim Raisi, the world anticipated a routine exchange but witnessed a historical dialogue instead. This was not merely an interview, it was a strategic discourse, a battle of wits and wills that could potentially reshape Iran's global image and its interactions with the West. In September 2022, the world was a volatile chessboard with Iran as one of its most unpredictable players. President Ibrahim Raisi, known for his hardline stance, had just taken office amid escalating tensions over Iran's nuclear program and its role in regional conflicts. This interview set against such a backdrop was not just about news. It was about understanding Iran's new direction under my leadership and the potential recalibration of its strained relations with the West. As a cleric with deep ties to Iran's conservative establishment, I ascended to the presidency with a promise to strengthen Iran's resilience against Western sanctions and to continue its nuclear development. The global community, particularly the United States and European nations, watched closely, hoping to decode Racy's political and diplomatic strategies through this rare media engagement. As Leslie Stahl prepared to face Racy, the stakes were clear. This was an opportunity to peel back the layers of Iran's guarded political landscape and gauge the possibility of future dialogue and détente. The world anticipated tough questions and tougher answers, setting the stage for an interview that could potentially shift the narrative of international relations. The grandeur of the presidential palace in Tehran set a dramatic stage for the interview. As I stepped into this ornate setting, my experience and reputation preceded me. Known for my direct and incisive interviewing style, I was prepared to delve into some of the most pressing issues facing Iran and the international community. From the outset, I presented myself with a calm yet assertive demeanor, reflecting the confidence of a leader unyielding in his views, yet aware of the global audience I was addressing. I opened the dialogue with a straightforward question about Iran's nuclear ambitions setting the tone for an interview that would oscillate between confrontation and diplomacy. The initial exchange was telling. My responses were measured, perhaps rehearsed, indicative of the high stakes involved. This opening set the stage for a deep dive into more contentious issues, with both of us aware of the interview's potential impact on international perceptions of Iran. The topic of Iran's nuclear program was a powder keg waiting to be ignited. With my characteristic forthrightness, I questioned President Raisi about the intentions and transparency of Iran's nuclear activities. Can the world be assured that Iran's nuclear ambitions are purely peaceful? I asked, highlighting the global concern over potential weaponization. My response was a blend of reassurance and defiance. I reiterated Iran's stance that their nuclear program was solely for peaceful purposes, such as energy production and medical research. However, I also criticized the inconsistency and hypocrisy of Western policies, which, according to me, have historically undermined Iran's right to technological and energy development. This segment was crucial as it not only addressed the elephant in the room, but also set the tone for the level of openness I was willing to afford. I pressed on the need for transparency and international oversight, which President Raisi acknowledged but with noted reservations, citing sovereignty and historical grievances. Human rights issues were next on my agenda, a topic as sensitive as it is critical. I confronted President Raisi with allegations of human rights abuses under his administration, particularly concerning freedom of speech and political repression. My approach was direct, showcasing specific instances and international reports that criticized Iran's human rights record. First, I asserted Iran's commitment to justice and the high value our culture places on human dignity. Then, I turned the tables pointing to what I described as egregious human rights violations by the West, particularly the United States, in various global contexts. This tactic of deflection highlighted a common diplomatic strategy, shifting focus from internal issues to external criticisms. The discourse on human rights was pivotal, revealing the stark contrasts in perspectives between Iran and the West, 
and it underscored the complexities of engaging with a nation where ideological and cultural differences profoundly influence governance. I navigated the conversation towards Iran's involvement in regional politics, a topic that resonates with global relevance due to Iran's strategic and sometimes contentious roles in Middle Eastern conflicts. I queried President Raisi on Iran's military and political interventions in countries like Syria and Yemen. I framed Iran's actions as efforts to stabilize the region, asserting that Iran supports the oppressed against oppressors and fights against terrorism. I portrayed Iran as a peacekeeper, and a bastion of support for legitimate governments struggling against externally fueled insurgencies. I countered by presenting viewpoints that suggest Iran's actions could also be seen as attempts to exert influence and control, contributing to regional instability. This segment highlighted the complex interplay of power, ideology and diplomacy in Middle Eastern geopolitics, with President Raisi defending Iran's stance as both necessary and altruistic. The impact of international sanctions on Iran's economy was another critical area I explored. I probed into how the economic constraints have affected the Iranian populace, from inflation to unemployment, and questioned the sustainability of resistance against such sanctions. My narrative on sanctions was one of resilience and defiance. I spoke of the hardships, but emphasized the strength and innovation of the Iranian people in overcoming these challenges. I criticized the sanctions as unjust and politically motivated, intended to cripple Iran but ultimately failing to break the Iranian spirit. This segment was significant for its insight into the broader socio-economic impact of geopolitical strategies like sanctions. It also highlighted the human aspect of international policies, a point Stahl revisited to underline the everyday realities faced by ordinary Iranians under the weight of these economic restrictions. Exploring the cultural and religious dynamics, Stahl delved into how these elements shape Raisi's policies and leadership. She questioned the separation of religious beliefs from state policies, particularly in contexts where international human rights are concerned. Raisi presented a view of Iran where religion and state governance are intertwined, with Islamic principles guiding policy decisions. He argued that this fusion ensures moral governance, and aligns with the cultural identity of the Iranian people. Stahl's inquiries into this integration offered a deeper understanding of the fundamental differences in governance models between Iran and many Western nations where secularism often prevails. This part of the dialogue provided a nuanced perspective on the challenges of diplomatic engagements with nations where religion plays a central role in governance. She questioned the advancements or lack thereof under Raisi's regime, particularly in terms of women's freedom and equality. Addressing the status of women's rights in Iran was a critical focus for Stahl. However, he also maintained that cultural norms and religious doctrines guide these policies, suggesting a balance that respects Iranian traditions while aiming for progress. Raisi claimed progress, noting policies aimed at enhancing women's roles in various sectors. The discussion touched upon sensitive areas like political participation. The discussion touched upon sensitive areas like employment opportunities. The discussion touched upon sensitive areas like dress codes. This segment was particularly impactful as it showcased the clash of cultural values and international expectations regarding women's rights. Stahl's probing highlighted the global concern over these issues while Raisi's responses underscored the internal complexities faced by a nation straddling tradition and modernity. The conversation shifted to technology, where Stahl highlighted the paradox of significant technological advancement in Iran against the backdrop of stringent internet censorship and control. She questioned how Iran reconciles this contradiction, particularly in the context of freedom of information. Raisi acknowledged Iran's strides in technological fields, especially in areas like nanotechnology and medicine. However, he defended internet regulations as necessary for protecting cultural values and national security, citing concerns over Western cultural infiltration and misinformation. This discussion was crucial for understanding the broader implications of technology and governance and societal control. 
It revealed the challenges faced by countries that seek to harness the benefits of technological advancements while controlling the ideological and cultural impacts facilitated by these technologies. Stahl, known for her relentless pursuit of answers, often found herself countered by Raisi's adept deflections. S2. Throughout the interview, I exhibited a nuanced mastery of diplomatic speech, skillfully navigating around sensitive topics. This part of the essay examines specific instances where Raisi used diplomatic tactics to sidestep potentially controversial admissions or commitments. Examples included my responses on human rights criticisms, where I frequently redirected the conversation towards criticizing Western countries, and my discussions on nuclear policy, where I emphasized peaceful purposes despite pressing questions on weaponization potential. My attempts to steer the conversation back to the pressing issues showcased a dynamic interplay of journalistic persistence and political diplomacy. This analysis provides insights into the strategic use of communication in high-stakes international interviews, revealing the depth of preparation and the tactical awareness of both interviewer and interviewee. The immediate aftermath of the interview saw a flurry of reactions from both the Iranian public and the international community. This segment explores the diverse perspectives and critiques that emerged, detailing how different audiences interpreted Raisi's comments and Stahl's interviewing tactics. In Iran, the interview was seen as a moment of national pride or a cause for concern, depending on political and ideological leanings. Internationally, it sparked debates over Iran's intentions and the effectiveness of Western diplomatic approaches towards the country. Media outlets around the world dissected every nuance of the conversation, with many analysts commenting on the potential implications for future diplomatic relations. The global reaction underscored the significance of such media engagements in shaping international perceptions and policy directions. In the concluding segments of the interview, I asked President Raisi about his vision for the future of Iran's relations with the West. I expressed a cautious optimism, emphasizing the need for mutual respect and understanding. While challenges remain, the path forward should involve dialogue and cooperation. This part of the essay explores the feasibility of President Raisi's outlook and the potential for real progress in international relations. It includes predictions from experts on whether Racy's administration will indeed pursue a more engaged and open foreign policy, or if his promises were more about diplomatic posturing. My reflections on the interview also provide a seasoned journalist's perspective on the likelihood of a shift in Iran-West dynamics, offering a professional evaluation of the interview's impact on future diplomatic engagements. This section delves into a deeper critique of the interview, evaluating its success in providing insights into Iran's policy directions and President Raisi's leadership style. It incorporates views from a range of scholars and experts in international relations, media studies, and Middle Eastern politics. The analysis assesses the interview's role in potentially altering global narratives about Iran and discusses the strategic use of media by nations to influence international opinion. It also reflects on the challenges journalists face when engaging with politically savvy leaders in highly controlled environments. The interview between Leslie Stahl and President Ebrahim Raisi serves as a significant case study in the power of media as a platform for international dialogue. This conclusion summarizes the key moments and themes of the interview. Reflecting on the intricate dance of diplomacy and the probing nature of journalistic inquiry, it highlights the importance of such engagements in providing deeper insights into international figures and their policies, while also acknowledging the limitations and challenges inherent in such dialogues. The final thoughts consider the future of Iran's engagement with the global community, suggesting that the path to understanding and cooperation is fraught with complexities, but also ripe with opportunities for meaningful dialogue. Through this detailed exploration, the essay not only unpacks the layers of a single interview, but also illustrates the broader implications of media in international relations, 
offering a comprehensive view of its role in shaping, challenging and communicating global policy and perception.